Hello everyone and welcome to episode 20 of SSTO Space Program. Today we have EVE in our sights. We will not only land our spacecraft on EVE, but we will also explore different biomes using the rover that we are carrying in the cargo bay. We will also pay a short visit to Gilly, where we will discover yet another anomaly. So, let's jump right into it. As you know, our spacecraft is currently sitting in the orbit around EVE, and the first thing that we want to do before we actually land it on the surface of EVE is to change the orbit to polar orbit. We can do it easily with uh, the engines that we have currently because the delta V is not a problem and we want to change our orbit to a polar orbit mainly because we want to deploy a satellite that will scan the surface of EVE for us because with all the visual mods that we have installed EVE looks like it should and is completely covered with a dense cloud layer so we have no idea about surface features or biome distributions on EVE. So I figured it would be a nice idea to have at least some preliminary information about how EVE really looks like before we actually attempt landing on EVE because first of all we don't want to be landing in the ocean and second of all I would like to pick a landing spot that would have at least a couple of biomes nearby so we can maximize our science gains. To do that we needed to wait a couple of orbits but luckily the orbital velocity around EVE is so high that the scanning was going really really fast and just after a couple of orbits we had a very preliminary but sufficient map of the surface of EVE and I was actually able to find a spot that had not one, not two, not three, but five different biomes lying nearby. So I decided that we will land there. Since our vessel is not exactly rated for re-entering in uh, any atmosphere and uh, EVE especially, we needed to first lower our orbit slightly and then um, perform a uh, rather large deorbit burn that would pretty much cancel uh, the entire orbital velocity that we had around EVE to, you know, minimize the heating problem and uh, avoid any unnecessary explosions. And um, this is mainly because uh, some of the modules that we have that come with uh, the MKS mod are not really rated for high temperatures, especially those curbitats. And uh, yeah, Delta V is not a problem in this vessel since we have a hyper efficient engines and um, we could totally do it and uh, you know land in a very safe way so once this was done uh, we could enjoy a relatively slow descent on the surface of eve and as you can see uh, <laughs> with those dense cloud layers you have absolutely no idea where you're going so the map is really really useful and i highly recommend any kind of map that you can get be it by a stock means or scansat as i'm using here because otherwise navigating on eve especially when you have clouds installed uh, might be quite challenging I must say EVE is pretty beautiful actually with all those clouds and atmospheric scattering. It might be a very dangerous planet and a planet that is also really difficult to take off from but um, it has uh, some hidden charm. So my uh, deorbit burn wasn't that accurate and uh, we actually had to fly a couple hundred kilometers to the spot that I've picked for, um, for our landing and uh, that took some time but uh, you know we <laughs> again had uh, quite efficient engines and that was not a really big problem and um, another thing that uh, I wanted to say is that uh, I would like to take back all of what I said about slow descent with our uh, Venera inspired lander because <laughs> the descent velocity with this vessel mm. was pretty much non-existent uh, it could literally stay in the atmosphere for very very long time it's pretty I mean it's looking really nice especially when you're flying inside clouds and you have absolutely no idea where you're heading but um, yeah it took some time so if you ever go to eve with a space plane be ready for a really long trip down to the surface but hey i'm not complaining i like flying uh, planes and space planes as you know already and there are benefits to that as well as you can see uh, with such a low descent velocity you have time to rethink your landing location multiple times and uh, even start worrying that uh, it will be even more difficult than you anticipated to take off, but uh, here we are landing on the surface of EVE for the very first time with our high-tech spaceship and we've landed, finally. And as you can see we have landed on the side of the mountain, very close to the uh, our initial location. And I think it's high time to unveil finally our <laughs> surface reconnaissance vehicle that is called the Roach and has absolutely no <laughs> reference whatsoever to um, this car up from Elite Dangerous as you as you see. The unloading method for this um, for this rover is um, a bit um, quirky, let's call it that way, because uh, as you probably know if you ever played with the Malamute mod uh, from Rover Dude, um, those Malamute wheels when deployed are actually a little bit too wide to fit into Mark III cargo bay. 
and uh, when they are retracted you cannot use them as wheels so I was uh, I wasn't quite sure how to actually figure out uh, the way to unload this rover in a very controllable and repeatable way and uh, I figured that we could use a winch um, you know that's uh, probably because I've played spin tires for a bit too long but uh, hey, yeah, I figured out that with a Kerbal inventory and Kerbal attachment system we could actually have a winch installed on our rover and there are multiple attachment points that allow you to pull the rover out of the cargo bay and then pull it in when you want to install it um, inside the cargo bay. But yeah, as you see, we've managed to safely deploy our rover on the surface of EVE and uh, yeah, now we are ready to go explore what we have found. Unfortunately, I had to retract the antenna that it just deployed because a Apparently only if the atmosphere is so dense and uh, our rover was able to accelerate itself to about 35 meters per second and since I'm playing with the part pressure limit as well the antenna was actually breaking when we were driving a little bit too fast and since we were driving downhill um, yeah we, we were driving pretty fast so yeah so our trip was really quite boring actually i was just um i mean the initial part of our trip was quite boring because we were just rolling down the hill and um getting all the science data from all the biomes that we are just uh, passing through and um yeah that was quite significant amount of science that we were able to collect because uh, we had uh, about five biomes very close to a landing location and uh if we had the ability to actually float on water we could also go to the shallows and to the um, oceans of eve but uh well we didn't so i just focused on the biomes that were on the ground and uh yeah the trip downhill was pretty standard really nothing exciting happened during the trip i'm really sorry about that but there will be exciting things later so it was slightly more exciting at least but well i'm not complaining since the uh, vistas on eve are actually pretty nice and I, I really do like this planet well it's difficult to get from and uh without mods it's almost uh, a pain in the bath to land on Eve and then take off but uh, once you get there it's actually pretty nice I really like the violet uh, tint to it and um, yeah I mean we've been driving for um, quite some time uh, so as you can see uh, <laughs> when we finally got to Lowlands our final destination I was pretty happy and after a uh, mandatory flag planting we were ready to go back to to our ship and uh, yeah one final look at the uh, landscape of Eve which is pretty nice as I said I, I really like this planet it's um I don't know I would say it's colorful but it really isn't it's just violet but it's somehow with all those clouds and you know it's kind of like a misty and mysterious overcast day um, I like it really like it so yeah uh, now the exciting part starts uh, as you as you saw uh, just before maybe we get to that as you see uh, our rover is equipped with a small rocket engine that uh, on a lower gravity world would allow it to make jumps but uh, here it's a bit the gravity is a bit too high and the way this rover is powered actually because as you can see it has no solar panels it is powered by a carbonite electric generator and has small carbonite tank in uh, the surface bay as well and um, yeah <laughs> the part that uh, got me a little bit uh, scared well and uh, yeah the problem that we had with this rover was that it could not climb the mountain <laughs> back again to our ship and uh, it started slowing down more and more and more and um, it just couldn't climb the slopes that were higher than 10 degrees and uh, as you see uh, at uh, 5 degrees it's already slowing down significantly and at 15 degrees it went down to like 3 meters per second and since we had uh, still about 15 kilometers left to drive and um, the uh, slope got even higher later I decided that we are not going to continue like this and we have to do something about that. I tried fiddling with the wheel configurations I mean not configs but the settings of the wheels but that did not help and was still like getting below three meters per second on a slightly inclined slope and um, yeah that was a potential problem so I decided that uh, we can always ask our um, other scientist that was left in the in the spaceship to actually fly the spaceship back to us and uh, well I was thinking that we have much more Delta V than we actually need and uh, that was still possible and yeah here we are flying as you see uh, it looks pretty badass actually I really do like how this ship looks like and uh, the um, on Eve it does look like a different game than KSP well at least a different than I'm really used to and yeah getting to a rover was not a big deal really I just had to fly a little bit so for a 
for a um, spaceship or a plane that's uh, not a very long distance for a rover that goes three meters per second that would be enormously long to drive and um, yeah after landing all we needed to do is just drive a little bit uh, back because I was extra careful when landing the ship not to break anything uh, now all we need to do is just basically uh, pull the rover back into the cargo bay and uh, to do that we needed to ask one of our um, Kerbals, the Depshaw Kerman, to actually go out and uh, attach the winch to the front of the cargo bay. Um, that's relatively simple to do uh, with Kerbal inventory and Kerbal attachment system, so that's great. And as you can see there are multiple joints in the cargo bay where we can attach the winch. And um, yeah, once it was done the only thing that uh, was left to do is uh, align the, the rover actually so it would be pulled directly into the cargo bay and uh, and retract the winch. And uh, once it was in place, uh, a permanent pipe connection was done to secure it in place. As you remember, we also had a contract that required us to mine some ore from EVE and delivering it to Gilly. And uh, that's why I installed the uh, ore drills on the sides of the vessel. And uh, yes, I did install the drills and I did actually install a uh, ore container but I completely forgotten about installing the radiators for those drills and therefore we just couldn't mine it. We needed to have about some 2100 units of ore if I remember correctly mined from EVE and um, it was just not happening. Absolutely not happening. And uh, after some time spent mining basically the drills heat up to the point where uh, they stop working obviously and uh, yeah I, I decided that we are not going to, to wait that long because we could technically maybe stop drilling let the drills cool for a couple of days and then start drilling again but it would take enormous amounts of time and, and we basically can't wait that long. We need to go back to Kerbin before Duna launch window occurs and for that we actually needed to to finish that quickly. So this contract, this particular contract was not completed during this mission but we also had another one that required us to take temperature readings from the orbit of Gilly. So it was time to take off from Eve and head to Gilly. And as you can see our ship with extra engines is actually climbing relatively well. I mean it's still hopelessly unaerodynamic with those labs actually pointing sideways but uh, yeah but it's, it's flying, it's climbing and um, with uh, 1.6 uh, g acceleration we could almost climb straight up but uh, to actually get some uh, horizontal velocity as well I decided that uh, we should uh, climb at 40 degrees inclination uh, or pitch. I don't, I don't know that's what I thought would be interesting to do and uh, you know especially when you consider that on EVE actually you cannot go really fast due to the a very high drag atmospheric density and the heating that would occur relatively quickly if you try to accelerate uh, well we were climbing fast enough although I must say that getting into orbit even with those overpowered engines was still very long process and uh, but we finally got there as you can see and we were able to get into a stable orbit around EVE and at this point I decided that uh, one thing that is left to do is go to Gilly because we had a uh, contract to do on Gilly that required us to perform some um, temperature readings from low space around Gilly and uh, to make things a little bit more interesting I thought that maybe this time we could actually go to Gilly using a true brachistochrone trajectory a because it's um, really close to EVE and <laughs> so it's kind of like fail safe if we if I um, screw up something and uh, second is that uh, we didn't have enough Delta V to actually go back to Kerbin and I was thinking that Gilly might be a relatively safe destination if anything goes wrong we can always cancel the velocity and still have enough Delta V to go back to, to Kerbin and uh, I must say that actually uh, eyeballing a brachistochrone trajectory um, maybe Gilly was just not the right target but it was really difficult I, uh, I couldn't pull it off and then I realized that we actually don't even have enough Delta V to, do, <laughs> to, to go to Gilly even and um, yeah we, we didn't go there using a true brachistochrone trajectory but it was pretty close it still took us just a couple uh, I think even less than one hour to go to Gilly uh, so uh, yeah as you can see we accelerated to over 10,000 meters per second 
and then we were breaking for half of the time so it was still interesting actually uh something that i found out quite recently if you want to have a look at uh, real brachistochrone trajectories and uh, how they would uh, behave and how it would actually look like to use them in a real solar system then a very good uh, simulator let's call it that way to do that is space engine space engine actually now features spaceships that you can fly and uh, they have orbital mechanics it's like um well flying spaceships in space engine is like flying spaceships in ksp on steroids everything is much harder because um you get absolutely no help but then you have autopilot and this autopilot is able to um to fly you to the body of your choosing using a brachistochrone trajectory because the fuel fuel is never an issue so so yeah, so if you would like to see how a real brachistochrone trajectory might feel like in a real solar system and see how much truth there is to the things that are shown in the expanse, then I suggest uh, Space Engine. I would say Space Engine is a, a great tool to, to visualize that. But okay, let's go back to KSP. As you can see, we are landing on Gilly. And uh, upon landing, I realized in the distance that there is something that looks like an anomaly and um, instead of landing where I initially uh, happened to be, let's call it that way, I decided that, uh, well, uh, you know, Gilly does not have a um, massive gravity or anything like that, so you could actually uh, fly on monopropellant there. Uh, well, with this massive ship, that is relatively uh, a big and heavy ship, I was able to fly on monopropellant. So I decided that uh, we should fly over to that anomaly. And it turned out to be uh, another of those green obelisks that uh, we found uh, recently on Duna that also unlocked a uh, last science node for us. So after performing a standard surface business of uh, collecting all the possible science data that we could, I decided that uh, it would be not a bad idea to try to refuel water on uh, Gilly. And uh, to do that we could uh, mine carbonite actually from the surface of Gilly and then convert it into water using the converter we had on board. Unfortunately the uh, water mining rate was so small that um, this didn't really work. We still had enough Delta V to go back to Kerbin uh, using a standard trajectory. It uh, just wouldn't be that fast as I anticipated. So, so yeah. So as you can see, we also cashed a little bit of money from doing all the world first milestones. And then the last thing to do, as usual, <laughs> was planting a flag. It was a very uplifting moment, as you can see, uh, to the point where actually Valentina started to promote. So. I suppose it worked really nice. And yeah, here we are, landed on the surface of Gilly. A very nice, um, I would say a very nice looking landscape and vista. Believe it or not, but it was my first Gilly landing in, uh, in my entire history. I've never been to Gilly before. But yeah, but we've managed to go there. And um, one thing left to do after all of this surface business was completed was this contract that we needed to do that required us to collect some temperature readings from the orbit around Gilly or the, from low space around Gilly. And actually with the stake of scene I uh, reached uh, escape velocity so, <laughs> so I had to burn back to get into orbit around Gilly. And uh, yeah, as you can see the orbital velocity around Gilly, uh, if you're like me and never been there before, is um, around 20 meters per second. So. Yeah, so basically energy conservation maneuvers were um, were really pointless, really. We would have to wait forever to actually get to all of those nodes and uh, it was much faster and uh, didn't require that much Delta V to actually go directly to the points where we need to take those temperature readings. And uh, yeah, that was, that was achieved eventually. I mean, all of those readings were taken. That required some flying around Gilly and uh, as you can see, <laughs> a lot of strange maneuvers from my part. But that was eventually done, and uh, there is really little to say about that. Once all of the readings were taken and the contract was completed, we could reach the, uh, well, we could perform a small burn and then reach the blazing speed of about 40 meters per second to, to get to the uh, escape velocity from Gilly and <laughs> get into orbit around EVE. I must say that this mission was probably a partial success. Uh, the main goals were uh, achieved. We got to Eve and back, we got to Gilly and performed all the readings that we needed to, to perform there. Um, the mining systems have to be improved, obviously, and the aerodynamics uh, have to be improved. And um, yeah, apart from that, I would say that uh, that's a very good baseline 
to improve this shit, to get something that would be much more uh, efficient in the future. We can't really afford going to Kerbin using a fast trajectory, so we'll go there using a standard trajectory, but that's not a big deal. We will still arrive at Kerbin before Duna launch window occurs, and uh, in the meantime we will have time to focus on construction of our Duna vessel. So thank you very much for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed, if you enjoyed please consider liking this video. My name is Mark Frem and I will see you next time.